Hi ladies, this is a review of Sex Linked Inheritance. So if you need a little refresher, this is Sex Linked. Um, note that uh, the most important thing that you need to understand with Sex Linked, you're going to follow the same rules and patterns and everything that we talked about before. Um, but we're talking about genes that are only found on the X chromosome. When we're talking about X linked. Okay. Um, technically, you can look at the inheritance pattern of things on the Y chromosome. These are called Y linked. Um, but the majority of the time, when we're thinking sex linked, you're going to focus on the X chromosome. Okay. And the biggest thing that you have to account for when you're thinking about sex linked disorders is the number of X chromosomes males and females have. So remember that if you have two X chromosomes, this indicates a female. If you have one X chromosome and a Y, this is going to indicate a male. Since we're focusing on um, X-linked disorders, hey, we are just using this Y basically as a placeholder. You don't want to put any alleles or anything on there. It's just there to indicate that the individual would be male, and it's basically a placeholder. So let's kind of go through and talk about this one problem to kind of give you a good background on sex linked. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is kind of read through and make a key, remember? So red green color blindness is inherited as a sex linked recessive. Okay, so we're going to be focusing, you need two, whenever you see sex linked recessive, that means that a female is going to need two copies to express. There are sex link dominant, but they are very, very, very rare. Um, so for um, the majority of the time, uh, we're going to think about recessive. So two copies to express a recessive for females. The males actually only need one copy of the recessive to express. Which is why... Um, the majority of the time, you're going to see a much higher um, proportion of individuals with the sex link disorder in males. <clears throat> okay, so they're more likely to express than females. Okay. You will see it on females on occasion, but typically you see it um, most likely in males because they really only need one copy in order to express. And one other thing to kind of keep in mind, just a little trick to kind of think about, every male is going to inherit their X chromosome from mom. Okay, So um, these traits are never passed down the, from father to son. They're really typically passed down um, the maternal line Okay, because we're focusing on the X chromosome. So let's look at this one right here. So if a colorblind woman marries a man with normal vision. So let's make a key first so we can get our allele straight. I'm going to do X and then we're just, I'm going to do an R for red, green, colorblindness. C's kind of look too similar. So a big R would indicate normal. Do a little r is going to indicate color blind. Okay, so make a key, it's really helpful. Um, let's get our um, genotypes for our parents. So we know we have a colorblind woman. Women have two X's. The colorblind is going to The, the recessive. In order for her to express this, she needs to have two recessive. Okay, let's cross that with a male who has normal vision. Okay, so males are X, Y. Um, he has normal vision. Okay, so I'm just going to set it up just like that. I'm going to figure out what my gametes are going to be. Remember, you can give one allele, not both. So one gamete is going to have little, our big X, R. 
this um, individual is going to have x and then y is going to be the other gamete, okay? Because okay, males can give either x or y to their offspring, females will always give an x, and then the combination of these are going to produce the offspring. You can figure out what the combinations are going to be by creating a Punnett square. Okay, put my gametes here, so these would be the eggs. This would be the sperm. Combine them together to get an offspring. And then what would be the expected phenotypes of the children? So let's get a nice ratio going for this. So it's important to include in your ratio the sexes of the individuals because the sex does matter. So if I look at the females, females actually happen to be expressing the same thing. Okay, so they both have one of the dominant alleles, so they're going to have normal vision. So one normal female to every... Okay, and the males are the same thing. They are both colorblind because they got that colorblind allele from mom. Note the males will always get their X's from mom. They never get them from dad. Okay, to one colorblind male. Okay, and that's how you do it. Um, you could also do a proportion. So if I wanted to say what's the probability of for having a female that's normal, Okay, if I already know it's a female, it would be 100%. If I want to know the probability of it being both female and color and normal vision, okay, that would be one half, okay, because there's a 50% chance that it's going to be female and colorblind, or excuse me, and normal vision. If I wanted to know the probability of having a child that was colorblind, okay, 50% of the children are colorblind. Okay, I want to think about the probability of having, if I know I have a boy, what's the probability of the boy being colorblind? It'd be 100% because you already know that your boys are going to all be colorblind. So just a couple of different ways to think about it. Um, please try to answer all of those colorblind questions and bring um, anything that you have trouble with to class. Have a nice day, girls.